So today we're checking out Emulation Station and how to get your PlayStation 2 games up and running. So this one was a recent request and I've gone through with that request. So what I'm going to do in this setup guide is show you the easiest possible way of getting your PlayStation 2 collection game running through Emulation Station. I'm going to go through some video settings and just generally get you some really awesome gaming experiences with PlayStation 2 in Emulation Station. So check this one out. Okay then, before I start today's emulation station and PlayStation 2 setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming emulation content, as well as a range of other front-end emulation systems that I do setup guides for on my channel, Just Jamie, which I do every day. So yesterday, I uploaded the emulation station Wii setup guide, and someone's just recently requested I do PCSX2. So thanks for that request, and this is what we're going to do today. So what we need to do first is establish how we're going to play PlayStation 2 through Emulation Station. So there's a couple of routes to go down, just like yesterday's Wii setup guide. We can either download the PCSX2 standalone emulator, which could be a little bit more complex and a little bit more time consuming, or we could go down the really easy route and use RetroArch, and that's what I'm going to do for this one. So we're going to go to the RetroArch website and download a portable version of RetroArch, and like always, if you know what I'm doing just here and you've already done this, then just fast forward and uh, just get to the point where I'm going to be talking about installing things itself. But if you don't have RetroArch and you're new to this, then we're going to go down to download a portable RetroArch. I can download the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version. Now, if you're not sure which version computer you're using, just go to your search bar and type in system information. And under system type, you'll find out if you've got a 64-bit computer or you're using a 32-bit computer. So I'm going to download the 64-bit. And while this is downloading, PlayStation 2 obviously needs BIOS files. So I'm going to leave this link in my description. Now, this is known as PCSX2 RetroWatch Core, but it's not actually called PCSX2 inside of RetroWatch. It's actually called LRPS2. And this is a BIOS files we need. Now, just remember that if your BIOS files aren't correctly named or you've got the wrong files, it's quite likely that your games aren't going to work. And whilst we're here, we can take a look at other bits and pieces that we can do to enhance our experience. Uh, so your game extensions should be in these file extensions. So typically .iso is the most common file extension you'll get. So what I recommend you doing is putting in your PS2 games into a DVD rewriter drive or whatever and it's strapped in them and just creating .iso images out of them. Um, nice and clean compact and it does what it's supposed to do. So what we're going to do then now we've downloaded RetroArch is just open up the zip folder and let's just drag out the RetroArch folder. Okay so once you've extracted that let's just Go to show more options, rename, and just delete the hyphen win64 or hyphen win32 if that's the version you downloaded. Now with RetroArch, I'm going to open up my Emulation Station Desktop Edition folder, and inside of Emulators, I'm going to drag in that RetroArch folder just like that. Uh, next thing we're going to do is go into that RetroArch folder and system just here, and what I'm going to do is right click on an empty space here and go to folder so we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to title this new folder PCSX2 and if I go inside of that folder and I right click again to make another new folder I'm going to type out BIOS and it's within this BIOS folder this is where those BIOS files are going to go so just drag and drop them inside of that PCSX2 BIOS folder so once you're done dragging your BIOS files inside of that BIOS folder, if we come back out, what we're going to do is actually open up RetroWatch itself. So you're going to find RetroWatch here, which is RetroWatch.exe. If you double left click on that, 
that's going to open up RetroArch. And like I always say, uh, let's set this up correctly. If we leave it to open up in window mode, when we're playing games through Emulation Station, it's going to constantly boot up in a windowed mode, and that's very irritating. So we're going to go to Settings and set this to open up in full screen. Uh, so Settings, we're going to go to Video. Uh, we're going to go to full screen mode and start in full screen mode by default is turned to off. If you left click on that, it will turn it on and it will briefly reboot RetroArch. Okay, so as you can see, we're now with full screen mode. And what we're going to do next then is actually download a RetroArch core. So uh, cores, if you're not familiar with cores or you're not sure what they are, cores are essentially little emulators which works uh, for RetroArch. So to download these cores, what we're going to do is just go to main menu, load core, download a core. And now, like I said, it's not actually PCSX2 you're going to be looking for within this list. So you're going to find the core for PlayStation 2 under Sony PlayStation 2. And like I've been saying, we don't have PCSX2 core, we got LRPS2. So if we press enter on this one, that's going to download and install the core into RetroArch. And if we backspace or whichever button you're going to use on your controller to come out, just come out of there. And for now, we're going to just go down to configuration file and save the current configuration. We don't want these settings uh, forgotten. So once we've saved, let's just go down to quit RetroArch and press enter. Now we're back into RetroArch folder. So if we come out of this, and again, what we're gonna do is go to the ROMs folder this time. And under the ROMs folder, we're gonna find PS2. And if we open up PS2, there's a little system info.txt document. If you double left click on this, And this text document is just going to remind you what type of file extensions your games need to be in. Uh, so, of course, all the obvious ones here include in the famous ISO file extension. So, I've got a test game to use for this, which is Capcom vs SNK. If I just drag that inside of that ROM's PS2 folder, that's about it for now. So, what we're going to do next then is open up Emulation Station itself. And here we go. So if you've copied the steps correctly, you should now see PlayStation 2 with one game. So if I go in here, let's just quickly download some artwork or scrape some artwork. So main menu, scraper, and I'm going to go to scrape these games and just leave this to all games. I'm going to go to scrape these systems and just make sure Sony PlayStation 2 is checked. If I go to back and under content settings, I'm going to just download all the pieces of artwork for this. I'm just going to start. And let me just remind you, if you've got a lower end computer or what some will refer to as a potato computer, I don't think you're going to get too far with PlayStation 2. So just check how um, the requirements, computer requirements for uh, playing PlayStation 2 games is recommended to have between four and eight gigabyte of RAM for starters. So say for example you've got 2 gigabyte of RAM, it's not going to do much justice for playing your games and in fact it's going to lag a lot. So uh, we got our artwork, if we come out, here we go. And what I'm going to do next is main menu, other settings, alternative emulators, PS2, and just make sure LRPS2 default is selected. If you use one of these others and you don't have it installed, uh, it's going to not work. So just make sure default LRPS2 is selected. And let's open up the game for the first time. Okay, just like a real PlayStation 2, it's going to go through format and memory cards, that type of thing, what you can see here. Uh, so just go through that process. Look at the 
So as we can see, the game's working fine, but we can tweak this to make it look even better. And we can even go beyond 5K internal resolution in some cases. So access to a quick menu when Retro Watch, I'm pressing Google Stadia button and Y button simultaneously. And if I go down to the core options, and then from here, go to video, uh, we got render to start with. Now, if you find a game is providing you with a black screen and it should be working, uh, just swap this over to OpenGL. By auto, this works fine on D3D11, which is DirectX 11. Uh, under internal resolution, like I was just saying, you can actually technically go beyond 5K with this, which is obviously gonna make your games look a hell of a lot better, but this comes at the cost of your hardware. If you're running a computer, which is, uh, a potato computer then you're going to find a lot of lag so just be modest but just bear in mind even if you can put this to 720p or even 1080p it's a massive massive difference over its original resolution and if we go down to the interlacing modes we got various options here where we can add bits and pieces of blur to our games to take away pixelation and if we go down to aspect ratio uh, technically ps2 games were standard at 4x3. Uh, some games is going to benefit by putting it to widescreen 16x9 and it's going to look okay but some other games are going to look very stretched and they're not going to look right. So that's entirely up to you if you like stretch looking games or you like how they should look. Uh, if we go to enable widescreen patches uh, this will render your games at 16x9. So again this is in combination with aspect ratio so those two work together. We've even got a feature here with enable 60 FPS patches so if you want to play uh, 20 year old games in 60 FPS the options there if you want it. And if we go down to FX AA, I've already turned this on, and this is going to provide us with anti-aliasing, which means it's going to take away jagged edges. We got anastrophic filtering. Now I've set this one to two times, and just like internal resolution, the further up you go with this, the more likely your games are going to struggle to perform it if you're running a potato computer. So even by putting this to two times if you can, it's still a massive difference. So with these settings already put in place, what I'm going to do is show you some gameplay footage of this. Quick menu, resume. And as we can see, we now got a full screen and it looks fine. So to add a little bit more to this, if we go out to the main menu, go to settings and just go down to video, scaling. Now we can put integral scale on, which is going to compress the image slightly, but it's not going to look so bloated. So if you want to use this one, turn that one on. But if you want to use integral scale over scale, that's going to give you a much larger image and you need to turn integral scale off. So both really work the same sort of way. It's a method of blurring games so they're not so pixelated. I'm going to turn both of these off. Now we've also got aspect ratio here, which is under core provided. Let's put this to full. By linear filtering, it's like it says, going to add a slight blur to the game. Just turn that on and it should then reboot. Now let's go to main menu, quick menu, resume.
And what we're gonna do then is go back to settings, video and scaling, integer scale on. And I'm gonna just show you what this looks like. So there is difference in there. It's a hell of a lot of various video settings there for you to play around with. Now, whilst we're in RetroArch, if you fancy one day not open up Emulation Station for whatever reason, you can actually import your games into RetroArch, which will actually work just like Emulation Station, just not so glossy. If you go to Import Content, Manual Scan, Content Directory, you can search through your games just here. So I'm gonna go to C Drive, and from C Drive, I'm going to go down to Users, and the name of my computer is Jamie. And if I then go to Desktop, which is where my Emulation Station folder is, I'm going to then go into Emulation Station folder and into my ROMs folder. And if I just scroll down, I'm going to find my PS2 folder here. And I'm going to go to Scan this directory, press up on my D-pad and press on Start Scan. And if we come back out, we'll now find we got our PS2 library at the bottom. So like I say, if you don't fancy Emulation Station one day, just what, jump straight into the gaming. That's a really easy way around it. And obviously, just save all your settings. And actually, if we go to Quick Menu again, and we go to Core Options, Manage Core Options, we got two options here. If you're happy with all the video settings you've made and you want to apply all these video settings to every game in your collection, then you can go to Save Content Directory Options. And every time you open up a different game, it's going to have the same video options saved. If you want to save the video options per game, go to Save Game Options. So that's it for today's Emulation Station and PlayStation 2 setup guide. Like I said, many thanks to the person who asked me to do this one, and I hope it helps. So if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming emulation content, which I upload every day. Also, feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.